All right, people, welcome to just a little podcast update. Now, just to aware you from the beginning on this strange setup, if you don't know what is going on right now, I am sat on a couch playing FIFA 2006. We've got Brazil against AC Milan. And, uh, oh, and um, we thought we'd just do a little podcast while we sit here and play FIFA. So... We thought that would be a great idea. And instead of having one camera angle on us, we've got one on the gameplay. So this is like the most primitive version of like gameplay streaming you'll ever see. So there's probably going to be some tapping noises that you're going to hear in the background. Now, obviously, I understand that that's going to be super annoying. How I, oh, not as annoying as conceding. However... I'm going to try and take them out in post, so so hopefully it won't make too much of a difference, right? Anyway, let's get into the motherfucking podcast. First of all, let me just address the lack of podcasts. What happened was, I just got busy with, like, making YouTube videos for me, other, my actual, like, real YouTube channel, obviously, because I don't make no money out of podcasts. Got to put bread on the table, just bought a fucking house, haven't I? So, uh... Put bread on the table, is that what you do? Do you put bread on the table? Uh, you put bread on your family, I mean, you put, put bread on the table for your family. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Or put bread on your family. Put, you can put bread on your family if you want. Can if you want. So, um, and obviously this is a massive format change, I'm 2-0 two, two down already, because <laughs> I'm sidetracked. <laughs> so this is a massive format change from being in the proper pro studio that I was in for a while, maybe I'll get back in there once I get podcasts set up. But I'm hoping to set up a nice little podcast studio in a room of my new house when I finally move in. Anyway, I'm going to do a separate podcast and podcast. <laughs> I'm going to do a separate podcast and update everyone on uh, just general life shit. So it would be like, you know, the move, if that ever happens, all that kind of stuff. But today I want to talk about coronavirus because, uh, well, it's not that I want to talk about it. It's just that I feel like, you can't make any kind of content without addressing it right now. And so I might as well get all the addressing of it done in one go so that then I can make non-coronavirus related content. So it's just going to be a chilled one, sat with us playing FIFA and talking about the global pandemic Pandemic that is uh, perhaps might wipe us all the fuck out. So uh, it's happening, isn't it? Shit's crazy right now. We just witnessed a uh, a national what was it, Mike? A, a, a national clap. A national yeah, clap. A national it, clap for the it NHS. A, it was a clap in solidarity with uh, the NHS. It was pretty sick, actually. Uh, I only I haven't watched the news that much today, um, which is actually quite a change because I've been watching it loads recently. But I only found out what, that this clap was happening re- like about two minutes before eight o'clock and then at eight o'clock we went out on the balcony everyone was like cheering clapping um people brought pans out and were banging them yeah there was um screaming whistling that was us actually yeah we were screaming we screamed there was fireworks it honestly like i thought i didn't think much of it when i went out and then like i was like shit i actually got emotional man i was like I i felt like we were legit like witnessing a historical moment like if it w- if this was normal times when everyone says like oh i'm doing this to sh- to show solidarity or something like that, i i usually think what well, that's, that's is a bullshit, bullshit yeah. meaningless like like attempt at like just virtue signaling shit and it's like it's like one of those useless things it's like it's like when i'm it's like people trying to raise awareness of stuff like Obviously, sometimes that's good. I'm not saying it's always bad. But there's a lot of people, like, r- raising awareness is, like, the the default reason for doing stuff when you can't think of a good reason. Do you know what I mean? Like, when you're not actually helping something, you just say you're raising awareness about it. <laughs> anyway, that's what I would usually think. But for this, like, it's, shit's different, and it? Like, legit NHS workers and that, I think, are one of those you know parts of society that do get shafted everywhere mate i don't care how much they get paid but they don't get paid enough obviously the work i mean i could go off for an hour on all the people that i think should get paid more like but 
anyway, yeah, it was pretty. It was a pretty touching moment, and uh, I actually felt pretty fucking emotional about it because it's just, it's just, it's just crazy times, and it. Everyone, everyone's trying to like come to terms. Well, I think half the people are not don't understand the gravity of the situation and the ones that do are just trying to come to terms with it like uh because it's it's crazy it's crazy times right now and it's kind of crept up on us didn't it no one really knows you know how the shit's going to turn out it's one of those things that i was saying to mike the other day i feel like we maybe have been in this false sense of security kind of thing you know like there, there's always a conversation around all these like cataclysmic things you know like nuclear war asteroids hitting like super volcanoes going off uh you know and, and, a, and a, an epidemic or a pandemic was one of those conversations that was just like there's always like someone doing a ted talk about it but no one actually takes it seriously but like maybe we've been, we're all been on borrowed time and maybe like all this shit's way more likely than we thought it would be. That that's the problem with nothing really ever going wrong for you. You 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 live in a fucking bubble, mate, where nothing ever does go wrong, and that, that's kind of bullshit. Because now people are dying, mate, and it's pretty heavy. So what I'm trying to say is, maybe we're gonna get an asteroid like tomorrow or something as well. And there's no. I saw on the news today, the Russians have been sniffing around in our waters or something we've been scrambling oh, yeah. some some boats or some shit do you scramble boats no you scramble uh, <laughs> you scramble aircraft you don't scramble bo- maybe it's like the military term for like getting something done last minute like yeah maybe scramble, you just get it out don't you i just scored i just scored didn't yeah I? you scored so you de- i think you deploy boats okay and, like like and, and scramble aircraft well yeah so we deployed some boats so russians have done that a few times actually just come oh. into our airspace well, it was water space, yeah. You, is that what you, is that the term? Did you say water space? You just say UK waters or UK British waters, waters yeah. Yeah, apparently they've been sniffing around, like... And I'm not usually one of those people who's, like, proper... I think when you watch American news, they paint Russia to be, like... I don't know. They, they've got just different attitude towards Russia, haven't they, really? Oh, yeah. I'm not usually one of those, but it said, like, uh, you know, there's been unusual levels of activity from them or something, and I was thinking... Yeah. Shit, you know, like, they say... Maybe something else could kick off whilst there's like this epidemic. Like. I've been thinking this, like, because because like when are you are you like worst place to deal with something like that when there's a fucking health crisis? Exactly, and, and you've every, all your resources are deployed against that. Exactly, you, like you're vulnerable. Man. That's that. I'm not surprised. There's theories about you know China making it on purpose and shit like that. You know, we can put aside all the fucking reptilian fucking. <laughs> Yeah, blood yeah. drinking Shape shit shifting. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean it's not that far fetched but no no I do think it's bullshit though yeah. well I don't think it's bullshit it is bullshit like <laughs> there's some this. that's one of the worst things about this whole thing like even the group chats I'm in some of my mates some of my mates send me stuff and I'm like lad do not send that around man you're literally just spreading the worst shit ever you know there's some crazy shit people are saying like you know, if you if you just drink hot drinks, like it kills it in your throat and all that shit. And I'm like, no, it no, it doesn't, mate. You got you got people sipping fucking ginger tea and thinking they're safe from a killer <laughs> virus, mate. You're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and 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 this fake news, like it it makes people think that like, oh, if I just do this, like you know, I'll be fine. It's like the Chinese like s- s- snorting fucking tiger bone or whatever they do. You know, all the herbal fucking remedies and yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like. like Pangolin scales. I don't. That. Yeah, yeah, mad shit, mate. Yeah, it doesn't work, mate. Stop it. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, anything like this. And 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 the funny thing is about it, you get copy and pasted these messages or forwarded these messages on WhatsApp, and they're like they're written as if it is written by like someone with medical expertise. And I'm thinking, what sad motherfucker is like literally just just trying to do this? Like, I don't get it, man. So be careful, people, because there's a lot of a lot of fake news, mate, going about. So get your shit from reputable sources, i.e., WHO and Gov.uk and all that kind of stuff. On this podcast, yeah, this podcast. I'm an expert, by the way. I'm qualified. 
got me level three PT lad. You did science in school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did human biology. At you, a were lad. So, you, you were science boy anyway. So I did human cool. biology at A level, so I'm fucking. I know me shit, mate. Yeah. So, don't believe stuff. In, in as a general rule, like if if you fa- get your information out of a group chat, especially with a load of lads in it, then you need your head checking, mate. Because uh, it's it's worrying levels of oh, ah. smash, worrying levels of misinformation out there. So you know, thrown away a two goal lead. You, you have, yeah. Hey, does is that, that is that the legit Ronaldo that's one that got fat? That's yeah. the one. Yeah. I was watching Roberto Carlos highlights highlights the other night. It was sick, mate. Yeah, yeah. He's a he was a little weapon in mate. He's just, just power chode, man. Yeah, he was. He was a turbo chode, mate. <laughs> Um, all right, the more coronavirus stuff. So I was going to say, I think one of the things that one of the things that makes it so difficult to deal with is like the inconsistency in symptoms that people are getting. So some people are getting like super mild. Some people are literally, well, obviously some people are dying. And then and then there's there's like general trends like such as older you are, the higher chance of dying you've got. Um, but then those th- they are only trends they're not rules so like you young people do die and a lot of the people who aren't dying are still having to be in intensive care you know being on uh, ventilators. ventilators and that's just not a pleasant experience that anyone wants to go through and so like because there is a general trend you've got all these people thinking oh i'm young i'm fit i'm healthy like even my dad mate like, don't get me wrong like my dad is like proper healthy for his for his age and that, and he's super mobile and fit, and uh, he, he literally like he can run further than me. But that's not saying much to to be fair. Like, but he's seventy four, mate. It doesn't like you just. That's just a bad attitude. I was like, Dad, you are not playing golf, lad. Ring Jeff and tell him it's fucking off. It's Jed. Jed, whatever. I was just making up a random name of an old person. He's close, but, like. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely got a mate called Jeff. Everyone, every, every Tony, he's got a Jeff. Yeah. Um, and so that's the thing that makes it so hard to deal with because you got a lot of people thinking that they're safe when they're not safe, mate. And I think, uh, you know, gen- generally in life, I'm not an overly cautious, overly cautious person, right? I, 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 and I actually hate, not hate people, but I actually really, I can't live with people who are like super hyper cautious because uh it's just not a great way to exist i don't think and in most circumstances i think uh it's just not called for but you know when you think about this like it's just uh it's one of those times where it's definitely worth being overly cautious so i would urge you all to be overly cautious keep your two meters don't go and see your mum and dad. Like I dropped some uh, shopping off for my mum and dad the other day, but we didn't go within about four meters of them. Probably, probably further. Didn't go in the house, so I didn't have to touch anything. I literally just dropped um, food in the porch and spoke to them from a distance <laughs> because it's just not worth it. Like it's not hard to to not you know it's not actually hard to keep your distance. Like I know like people get a bit of fatigue from it. You know, and they think, oh, it's probably sweet, but with the incubation period, you, you know, you might feel sweet, and then you go and hug someone or something, and then next minute, R.I.P. you and your mate, because uh, you just got COVID, mate, and you goosed. So obviously, I would urge you all to be uh, hyper vigilant with your social distancing, with your washing of hands for minimum twenty seconds, with your above 70% alcohol hand sanitizer, although hand washing does seem to be better than hand sanitizer because the soap not only breaks down the virus molecule, but also rinses it off your hand. What else can you do? Just generally don't be near anyone. That's it, mate. It's not that hard, man. There's a lot of stuff about how long it lasts on surfaces and stuff, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah. I and think... like this can be, it can sound a lot worse than it is, can't it? Because they say in like 72 hours on plastic, for example, but after that time frame, it's degraded loads to the point where it's, you know, to to actually catch it from a surface that it's been on. 
yeah. three days, you would be very hard pressed. It like, is you'd very You're basically unlikely. not getting it from it unless you fucking try and eat the packaging that the yeah, pasta comes in. You start in. licking the lift buttons. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Generally, stuff that people don't do. Well, that's that's good, obviously, because um, wouldn't it be a fuck up, mate? Imagine you go in the supermarket and every bag of pasta in Tesco's got a bloody. Oh, oh smash that. Every bag of pasta in Tesco's got Corona on it, mate. Yeah. You fucked everywhere, aren't you? It's not ideal, man. So it's good that, but still, exact. I mean, forget I've said, forget anyone said that because you should be hyper vigilant, man. Everyone should just be super careful because you know it's all fun and games until it's someone until it's close to home, man. It's all fun yeah. and games until it's someone near you. The whole point is like you don't want your ma to die, you don't want your nan to die, you don't want to die, you don't want anyone to die, man. And not only that, right? You can look at percentages and go, what are the chances? You don't want people to get sick, mate. Because then it might mean other people are gonna die, and um, even if no one died, even if no one died, mate, I don't want to be in a ventilator. Sounds wank. Sounds completely not ideal, mate. And um, obviously, there's there's a lot of people with lasting damage as well, lasting lung damage, lasting liver damage. So, what else can we do aside from uh, being safe yourselves and not to spread it? on there are i mean one other big kind of uh ramification of this whole situation aside from the human suffering and human death toll or or the direct death toll is going to be uh the economic that's a terrible miss the economic situation which is going to be atrocious as well well i'm speculating but it's not really speculation is it so what can we do during this whole situation Aside from the personal, you know, taking care personally, I think just to be a general good member of society, you know, for once in my life, uh, I mean, I'm not talking about me. (laughs) Uh, There's probably a few things we can do, right? So, number one, don't panic buy. Yeah, I think we're generally over that. I went to the supermarket the other day, and I think we're generally over the panic buying phase because everyone, the, the one good, you know, one of the rare times that like social media comes good, I think it literally shamed everyone into not panic buying. Yeah, yeah. You know, I saw a geezer in Aldi. Guilty, man. Yeah, I saw a fella in Aldi, and he had two twenty-four packs of toilet roll, and the one was like, "You can't buy two of them," and he was like, "Oh, one's for me, mum." And I was like, "She got the wildies or what, lad? Why can't you just ha- just because they're in packets doesn't mean you have to have one packet each. You've got." Can't you just have a 24 pack and half them, like, with your mum? Like, is that not, you know, does that not make sense? Like, kind of turds you having. I know, mate, you having. Anyway, so don't panic buy is one. Another one, I think you could, you don't have, even if you don't panic buy, you don't have to get stuff just because you think everyone else is getting it, right? So. You know, even if you're only buying a 500 gram bag of pasta, you might not actually need pasta. You know, why not eat couscous, mate? Which brings me on to the, another thing. Like, why don't you eat some different shit, man? Because at the end of the day, there's going to be like people out there who don't have a clue how to cook one and all they can make is tuna pasta, right? Mike, I'm looking at you. So, so leave the tuna and the pasta for Mike. Have couscous and a chicken leg, man. Does it have to be a breast? Have a leg, mate. Last night, I I got a couple of tortilla wraps off the shelves, put Nutella between them, folded them up and ate them. That was disgusting, lad. That was one of your lowest points. It was nice. I I, I I, I probably should have just used one wrap, though, to be honest. I was ashamed. Yeah. It wasn't a bad combo. It was just too much wrap, yeah. Mate, that's always the way, mate. It's like when you get a duck wrap from Boots, son. All it is is... You get one bite of like some like smashed up duck, and then the rest of it's just uh just like all folded up wrap at the bottom, mate. That's a joke. That yeah, just bunched up. Yeah, yeah. It's just hot. It's just like a solid, solid block of tortilla, mate. Um, what else can we do? So economically, now obviously you have to separate stuff out because like you might be someone who's affected, so you have to figure out obviously i'm sure it's not hard to figure out i'm sure you probably know if you're someone who's affected economically from it i mean everyone will be to some extent 
Oh my god, that was the worst miss <laughs> I've ever done. Worse than mine. Like obviously, I'm selling no training programs nowadays because no one sit in the gym, mate. So I need to start getting making some some home some home workout ebooks and shit. But anyway, obviously everyone's affected to some extent. But if you're seriously affected, then there ain't much you can do. You can obviously get as much government help as possible. Um, and then it's down to you taking some initiative i don't want to sound like i'm you know stance is taking some initiative isn't it and uh, doing the best you possibly can for your business or, or whatever it possibly is however if you are one of the people that that isn't too badly affected and is still in a position to help then obviously there are a lot of uh, small businesses right now um suffering and uh, even if they're ones that you can't like there's a lot of restaurants and stuff that obviously they can't serve any food anymore or, or they can do takeout, but the trade is massively hit. But a lot of them are still offering um, like vouchers and stuff like that that you can redeem in future, whether it's like restaurants, like I saw Tommy B put a post up or something that you can buy like, um, you know, you can basically pay in advance for stuff. So if you, could, if you can afford to and you can pay in advance for anything and you know, it's like a, a small business near you especially local ones if everyone supports their own local shit i just think it's good for you know just a good thing to do in it and you'd be surprised like there's there's that, that option is available for more than you more than you think uh, obviously if if your favorite restaurants and that are doing takeout then get it mate stock up because uh you not got much else to do have you except sit indoors all day so you might as well smash some netflix down your grid Oh. Listen to my podcasts and um, can see goals. Eat and some pizzas. Time. Oh, did I, is that stoppage time? Oh. Yeah, mate. Three, three. He's gonna go for the golden goal. Ah, oh, mate. Did they do a golden goal? Nah, in this section time, time in it. I think that's the best we can do, really, isn't it? Just, um, just trying to be cautious of where your where your money's going. And you know, the thing is, though, obviously, one of the main things that fucks an economy is. Uh, everyone gets scared and doesn't spend any money and obviously the emphasis is always on small businesses because people just see it as the individual and they and they think oh well this 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 large company you know they don't need it they're they're a big any big company is generally just seen as an evil entity isn't it it's just generally how it's pictured one however obviously if big companies start going under you know it's not just like you know, because all the CEOs, they can do without the bonuses, man. We don't give a fuck about them. But big companies are big employers, like, aren't they? So, you know, if Top Shop and Top Man go under, like, a lot of people are out of fucking jobs, man. And uh, so I don't really know, personally, I'm not clued up enough on, on economics. I don't know the um, the impact, like, of, um, you know, w- which is where best to place your money, whether it's because um, obviously these big companies they are definitely more robust as in they have generally better cash flow don't they and better reserves to withstand these kind of um situations so like obviously prioritizing those that don't like you know the 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 florist in your especially if you live in a local village like um you know i love love it when you find a little village and it's like one of those villages that's small enough to just have one of everything it's got like a butcher a florist a, a like maybe two pubs and like that's it man and that's the shit you really need need support but as i say like i don't really know the 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 impact uh and so i don't know just something to think about it also like i find it crazy that some of these big companies oh, oh mate I find it crazy that some of these big companies, especially ones in aviation, like, oh fuck, aviation and, uh, you know, hospitality, and, not hospitality, but like travel stuff generally, some of these are literally talking about going under within like a month, you know, within a month of, um, of like all flights being stopped and that. And I'm thinking like, if this company, oh, you're getting smashed everywhere, lad. I'm thinking... Why don't these company? Why don't these companies practice like some kind of decent? I'd love to see what kind of bonuses they've been paying everyone, like the board members and shit, for the last however many years, and ask them like, don't you like 
Just to take a lesson from personal finance, don't these companies put together an emergency fund? Like, why you, why you, if you're a company and you're literally a week or two weeks away from going bust, like, that, that's the equivalent of living hand to mouth, isn't it? That's literally the equivalent of like being on the breadline and living paycheck to paycheck. And like, for a smaller business, I would be more forgiven of that, but not when it's a big bus- business that like literally is probably paying out sick fucking bonuses to people. I think that's just irresponsible and you, it shouldn't even be an option that you should be allowed, you shouldn't be allowed to exist like that because think about all the jobs it puts in jeopardy, like like the anxiety that, that um, airline staff, airline employees must just generally live with on a day-to-day basis like because they're there you hear so much shit about them always striking and stuff because conditions are just notoriously shit aren't they but the anxiety that they must live with because they have just no job security because the this you know things can literally they can just get laid off you know in a matter of like some bad shit happening in a matter of weeks like and uh i just don't think that companies should be allowed to exist like that really do they? no i just think it's a bit of a travesty that they can be that irresponsible to be like weeks away from going under now obviously i'm not clued up on the i'm not clued up on it like but i just think there should be like safety nets um for companies of certain sizes they should have to operate with with certain kind of safety nets in terms of cash flow um and reserves or or at least have have to balance that with what they're doing in terms of uh how they're paying out and stuff you know how they're paying out bonuses and dividends and whatever and and i don't think they should be able to be kind of uh reckless with that if they don't have the money to you know get through tough times like anyway me and mike have been on lockdown obviously we're locking down so the rules are generally that you're supposed to like stay within your household unit aren't you and so that is that's just me and mike for now which is which is like actually not that bad probably one of the better situations because like imagine if uh you hated your fucking house mate imagine if you hated your your wife or something Imagine if you were sharing with about five people. I know someone, I know this girl, she's, sick. she's not, nah, well, she, she's sharing with, she's living with like four other people and doesn't like two of them. Yeah, oh, that'd be, yeah. Well, that's, like, yeah, you could say like, well, don't move in then, but it's different when people are in work and you don't see your fucking housemates, like, because some people don't see the fucking and housemates. A lot of people don't have a choice about who they live with too much. Or they just, you just need a room somewhere, don't they? It's not like, if you're living with five other people, it's not like you can be that picky with all of them is yeah it? No, you can't fucking go digging into it like you can't be like oh like, these four people are sound but i'm not moving because this one's a bell in like oh my god that was a terrible miss yeah so i mean we're lucky i suppose that we can like play fifa together and shit because obviously there's some people that are going to be lonely as fuck especially old people and that that's the real travesty about it like there's been a lot of stuff on um on the news about uh dealing with like the mental health implications of isolation and i think you know for us like for people our age unless you've got some kind of mental health issues originally this shouldn't be the thing that like sends you under do you know what i mean like you're just in your house for a bit it's fine isn't it yeah yeah you can you can get through i'd be on my own i'd just I'd just oh by the way everyone just want to let you know because someone told me um Pornhub are doing free premium as part of like a stay at home campaign so if you want to get on it just so I, so I heard anyway that's just what i heard through the great van i'm not sure like it's a rumor let me know if it's true because i don't even know if it's true for sure it's just something that i heard anyway do you want to rematch yeah yeah rematch. so yeah i mean it's not so bad for us right because we we can play fifa and we go out and kick a footy about in the daytime and that obviously not going near anyone else um it's generally generally pretty sweet we put some two pack on and get some workouts done in here all that kind of stuff and um so we're sweet but i do feel for p- some people who are going to be like you know part of the part of the voluntary service that is happening is uh people are going to be ringing people to talk to them like people who are on their own and that yeah yeah 
as part of the NHS uh, volunteer thing. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how effective that would be, man. Like, how... how it's just random person. If you're a lonely yeah, old dude, weird, like... If, and some random you dude. Want some I hope else. they're good at it. Like, these people, this... I'd be where... I'd be wary of doing that myself because, like, I hope these people are good at it because, like, one thing that I hate with old people is condescension, man. You, people, people, why do people speak to old people like the babies, man? Yeah, I don't even like speaking to babies like the babies. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> I see a six-month-old, I'm like, how's it going, lad? How many babies do you speak to? <laughs> well, a couple of my mates, well, one or two of my mates got kids now, innit? Uh. Um... So I hope these people that are, that are like calling them and that are actually, you know, well, I hope they do a good job. That's all I'm saying. Like, so I'm sure I couldn't do a good job. I'm shit at that kind of stuff. But yeah, because uh, it's pretty bad thinking about like a lot of people, man, just fully isolated. And so, as I say, I don't think the mental health implications for somebody of our age are a healthy, robust person with FIFA. 2000, FIFA 2003 and FIFA 2006. I don't think those implications are, are too are too great and anything to worry about societally. But it's the uh, old people who are obviously going to be a lot more vulnerable. Because just imagine it, man. I can't even. I can't even begin to comprehend. Like you know, you should be able to just like suit up the volunteers instead of calling them. You should be able to just suit up in a proper fucking mega. Not airtight because you'd have to breathe, but you know what I mean? Like a proper astronaut suit or something. Alright, sweet. Yeah, so we're back in the rooms. Uh, you won't have, everyone won't have noticed that, but we just had some severe technical difficulties. But we're back. Doesn't matter. Hit it. Hit it with the edit, mate. So, I think we were, what were we talking about? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember where we were up to, but it's oh, a shit. terrible place to give away a ball. <laughs> Alright, so we're at 3 3 in the 65th minute. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think we were talking about the bloody coronavirus, mate. Of course we were, but what about it? I don't know. It's just fucking everyone's plans, in it? The worst thing is not being able to book a holiday, mate. That's, a, that's, that's probably a terrible thing to say, that, actually. That is, yeah. I mean, it's uh, first probably, world problems. Then. I should really edit that out, but I'll keep it because I'm human. But, yeah, that's definitely not the worst thing about it. The worst thing about it is people dying, mate. Brazil is sick on this. I'm shit with everyone else. Ronaldinho's just a belter, mate. What's the first thing you're doing after it's over, Mike? Uh, booking a holiday. Where to? Spain. Spain. Yeah, several several holidays to Spain, actually, this year. I plan to go there fucking three times, actually. Yeah. In my head, yeah. Oh. Probably would have only made it about twice, but... Yeah, I'm, as soon as it's over, mate, I'm booking an Italy... And I'm booking a Japan, mate. There me too for this year. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll uh, be in a house. Because uh, obviously, that might be. They're talking about stopping all construction, so my house isn't quite finished. It's about two weeks away from being finished, or three weeks away from being finished. So if all of a sudden no workers are working anymore, then I haven't got a house to move into, mate. So we'll see what happens anyway. But yeah, first thing I'm going to do is book Italy, book uh, Japan, and then I'm just going to go for a picnic, lad. I'm going to go Tesco, get a Mediterranean loaf, get some olives and that, and then I'm just going to go Delamere Forest or somewhere with your bird. Just sit out there and have a fucking nice picnic, mate. Mm. Just smash it and just just love life, mate. I think one, one minor positive is everyone is becoming so appreciative of normal life people are actually taking some time to themselves aren't they like more than they because because you sort of feel guilty don't you like taking some time for yourself in a way what do you mean in normal circumstances yeah like you just think especially if you work for yourself you're like oh i could be working i could be working yeah 100 percent. you forget to take like you know actual time off because you feel like oh i'm always off yeah yeah because when you work for yourself the problem when the, when the, when there's a, not a clear boundary between work and play exactly when you work for yourself and it's from home you're just always in this in between stage where you like you know sometimes i'll have a couple of windows open it'll be like one i'll be editing a video and then in my browser i'll have like my emails up and then i'll also have like a tab up that's completely not work like youtube or something yeah and uh 
it's just this weird limbo in it. <clears throat> yeah, well, sometimes and the thing is as well, you might be messing about on on uh, on Instagram or something like just recording a funny story or something, and 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 like technically that's messing about, but like, is it really? Because like, it it might increase your engagement, and then and then. You know, it's, it's kind of linked to though, yeah, yeah, but well, but, it's not. It depends. Like it's I, like it's like going on all these to Thailand and get sick pics or something. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's hundred percent. Definitely, like so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's weird. Kind of counterintuitive. Like, you could it? justify it like just about. Um, people do that though. People actually go on like content trips. People go on trips just for content, mate. Yeah. I mean, I go. I go on. We do. Well, I mean, it's kind of a well, it's kind of something that's like a. A, a benefit in it on the side like yeah but like people literally just go to particular like restaurants or bars and that though like especially like fashion bloggery girl people girl people <laughs> girl people those girl people um anyway yeah so it's making us all a lot more fucking appreciative of normal stuff which is great because obviously we should be uh, and uh if we can all live a little better after it then that'll be ideal man because uh you know, it's so easy to, it, it's one of those, this is one of those things that is just a perspective giver. It giveth perspective, you know. It does. Because a anything that could potentially threaten your health or your loved one's health, that it is a huge... Just a force is you to make real changes. Oh, mate, it. mate, just incredibly, like, it just... It just makes you it just puts everything into perspective straight away don't it? you just think what the fuck like you, you immediately know you immediately have clarity on what is important in life right but on top of that we've got this kind of uh isolation aspect to this now so we're appreci- we're gonna appreciate just being able to go into a shop without having to be two meters apart from everyone and like yeah and seeing people that we like and that yeah and having pasta on the shelf mate yeah you know what i mean i might start like writing down all the shit that i missed i might make a video on my youtube crying about everything that i missed one one more game yeah we'll do one more more game. game yeah whole thing actually took a bit of pressure off me in terms of like content in a way I mean, that being said, I don't really feel pressure for content these days. Mm. I suppose I never really have, to be honest. But, like, it's funny. Now every- everyone's just making videos from home now, which is sick because it's just level playing field. And it's just, it's like, what can you do with what you've got, man? It's no longer about, like, oh, who's going fucking the sickest place. Like, to be honest, all that stuff kind of, like, it only applies to, like, travel vloggers and stuff. But... There's a lot of kind of YouTube content that's about flashy shit, man, like travel or fashion or general lifestyle vlog type stuff that is just uh, just lifestyle porn in it. Yeah. And now everyone's on the level playing field, man. So uh, you got to just do, you got to just work with what you've got, like work with the tools you've got, man. And Mm. so I, I can, like all of a sudden it's okay for me to make a video where the sole backdrop is my apartment. All of a sudden that's fine now. So... It's kind of good for me, man. What are you doing? Are you fu- All right. I thought you were going to fuck with your team, with your tactics and that. I thought you were going to start messing about with bringing a different left back on and that. No, what are you doing? Um, uh, it's also quite fascinating to see people, when people are, have limited options, the creativity definitely is tested and you find people do come up with some solutions. Like, And even on a on a very basic level, you see that in like, the home workouts that people are doing and stuff like that yeah. for a start. But obviously it comes, you know, you, you could talk about that on any scale. There's people, there's this huge companies who are now shutting down o- whole offices and having to come up with these business continuity plans of like, you know, how we're going to cope when everyone's working remotely. And it's quite uh, intriguing to see like, cause it, it's, it's such a, massive like shift in our general you know in how we live like to all of a sudden just be isolated so that, that's another thing that's we've said loads of times haven't we it's it's like such a movie thing that's happening to us 
Yeah, like feel... you're walking around like sort of suspicious of people and not wanting to get too close and all that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. We're, oh, yeah. 100%. I feel like we're in a sci fi film. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, wow, it's actually happening. It's like when you're a virgin and you first get through someone. <laughs> and you like, get through? <laughs> it's like when you're a virgin, you first make love to someone. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, it's, it's, uh, it's actually happening. Oh my god! It's, oh my god, it's, it's like so that, special. except a really, a really bad version. Yeah. Surreal is the. Uh, is the, is the word. word. It, it's hard to. It's hard. You, you have to pinch yourself a bit. I honestly, I've, I honestly like, I've, I've honestly felt that emotional man. Yeah. Like proper emotional, like in a way, like I almost like quite a few times I felt like I might cry, like, not like actually cry, but like almost. Well, yeah, maybe almost cry, man. Like not, I'm not sad. Like I'm fine. I'm dealing with it fine. I, I don't need someone to call me and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you hear of when, like someone, it, you'll be watching the news or something, and someone will say something, and it's like a proper, it's proper some heartfelt shit or something, or or, or actually they might have meant it in quite an innocuous way. Yeah. But actually, when you think about it, it's quite a deep statement, you know about just how just people struggling or or whatever it is or like even the all the clapping before that almost set me off man honestly I, and, I, and i'm not like a, I, don't, I don't cry man i do cry a bit not really though yeah oh stuff like that gets me dead bad all the time it's a- hard isn't it? really just like a we any story like that's that's in the least bit emotional or anything that i can just oh smashing all that anything that i can just sort of tune into and like where there's like a chance to like feel for someone. Yeah. I, oh, that's quite as well, lad. I I have a cry like sometimes. Do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what's so what's so surprising to me is like you you can't pick and choose when you're empathetic, right? You can't pick and choose like when to like feel like you know when, when to share someone's you know when someone's suffering becomes your so. Oh <laughs> my God, that's a belter. There's a peach. Who was that? When, when someone's the airy mate someone else's suffering be- becomes like some partly yours also you, you can't choose like i've like it's so weird how you can switch on and off from it or, or not purposely but how like like this is going to sound heartless like but there's a lot of homeless people in manchester and sometimes i really re- feel really bad for them most of the time i walk past them and don't feel anything yeah yeah like, I, I, and i and i and i that's not like I mean, it's no one's fault if you feel or not, but obviously you should all you should always and you should try try to and I, and and it's and if I if I stop and think about it, then I always do like yeah yeah. But but when you're just walking past and glancing, you don't. However, there are times when I find myself feeling proper sorry for people when they don't even feel sorry for themselves, like and like it might be like a stupid situation where like let's say. Let's say you're going somewhere and you, um, you know, forget something that you were supposed to bring and now you've got to go all the way back and get it. And it's like, it's not even, it's just a bit of inconvenience. And I'm like, and I'm, and, and that, I'm like, oh, fuck, I feel probably bad for that person. Like, yeah. And like, it's so, and I'm like, wow, this, this, the, the scale of this is like not right, man. There's no, uh, like, objective, objectivity to it, you know, to the actual, like, situation so weird i get it i even got it like reading reading books about like just like battles and shit man like because because people because it's like the british army as well and it's only like 100 150 200 years ago yeah it's like people were the same people were, were they were just the same oh, people. people were the same a thousand yeah, I mean. years ago yeah so, and, and just the, and i can picture like the accents and how they're saying it and like this has happened to them and now this has happened and Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, wow, I can imagine, like, just just being alongside that fella, like... Yeah, yeah. You know, it's see, crazy. See, that's the thing, like, people... Like, obviously, like, logically, a life is a life, right? Mm. Uh, and logically, you, you don't say, uh, you know, this life is worth more than that life. But, but you still obviously empathize more with things that are closer to home, like don't you and so yeah. of, so like it's like i did i posted on instagram the other day and it was just i was just talking about uh italy and how bad the situation was in italy and i wasn't trying to 
you know what whatever i was just saying like oh, i just feel for the for the people in italy because obviously it's a it's it was just fucking super rough right and and, I, and i've been to italy and it's one of my favorite places to go and i love it and i and uh you know i've i've been there and like experienced their kind of older generation do you know what i mean when you just see them sat around or, or yeah in, wh- wherever it is like and um obviously i didn't post about china like i've never been to china it's not like it's not like i'm saying one one life is worth worth more i'm not saying like an italian life is worth more than a chinese life yeah but it's just that i can relate more and that hit me more like yeah, obviously cool. yeah like it's okay to just it's like if if you pick one yeah you don't and someone actually commented saying like what the fuck bro everywhere in the world is bad or something i'm like yeah well i know yeah but like it's like i know but i'm talking about italy yeah yeah so fuck off it's like saying you know if 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 my nan dies are you gonna be as upset if you're as you would have if your nan died i know like it's it's like you are allowed to be more upset and you just you you relate to what you can relate to don't you and it's not you you know it's not even your choice like yeah exactly yeah so anyway I just wonder what it's going to be like when it's all over, man. But we're going to be talking about this for decades, decade, deco- decades, or, or or longer, man. Decades or centuries, like because this is this is the event of our lifetime, man. This is this is the thing. Like it's it's like I don't want to say it's like the war and that because obviously it's nowhere near. Like you ain't got like millions of people dead yet, but it's it's certainly the biggest thing of our lifetime. Like. Like up up until now, nine eleven was the biggest event, and by biggest, yeah. I just mean most 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 world altering altering. Yeah, most. and you could say the war on terror as well on off the back of that. Yeah, yeah, of and course. how many people you know died. Well, maybe that still is. Then, and I but, but I mean, it's still nowhere near like the World War One and Two. That they were just oh, apocalyptic. Of Eighteen million dead. World War One. Eighteen million. Yeah, yeah. Ten well, it million. Was, it was more World War Two on it. Because uh, the Russians and that, the Russians lost fucking about twenty million. Oh themselves. yeah, 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 yeah. But like our lifetime wise, this is this is the thing, man. So far, and I hope it's the only thing. Obviously, because if we go, through, you know. But I mean, so far there's what twenty thousand dead. But then again, you, you're not, you're not, you can't say like, oh, this is worse than this because this many. It's not like a death toll. It's not like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like death toll. It depends what metric you, yeah, you're measuring by. It right. still has to like. Have, it counts, Defo. Yeah, because like you know, do you want forty thousand dead or do you want twenty million? Yeah, exactly, forty thousand in it. Yeah, and even to put it in perspective, like the the the, the so-called war on terror, like you know, let's say like U.S. and British uh, forces lost in Iraq and Afghanistan total. You, you've not even reached like double figures in in, in thousands. You know, you're talking like six, seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. I would be surprised if it was over ten thousand. Isn't it? Like, isn't, isn't it mad though? That, see, it's just so so weird to try and um, to try and compare it, right? Because you go to America now, they're going to be so patriotic about you know anyone in the forces or anything like that, and, and rightly so. Like, I mean, personally, I think I am like that with our forces because I just think like some of the shit i've got one of my mates has been afghan twice and i just every time he talks about it i just i've got incredible respect for that kind of thing because i just wouldn't do it man i just wouldn't, couldn't put my life on the line like that. i mean i could if we were getting invaded but i wouldn't like just go voluntarily like yeah, yeah. for a couple of a couple of tours around the desert like and um and in america they'd be super like because they're so patriotic right super like respectful and and as, and as i say like rightly so about anyone in the forces right but if you said because how many's dead in in america now only a few hundred so far i think mm. i mean only a few hundred is just a wild statement to, to say but it, it, um, it in a country of 300 and odd million no. yeah yeah so if, so a few hundred dead now in america but if a few hundred died over the last like two weeks in some kind of military event wow it would be big like it would be americans would be 
you know, flying off the handle about it. Someone would be getting bombed to the fucking ground, mate. Someone would be getting Someone a, a J dam on them, like carpet bombed, mate. You know, there would be there would be collateral, like, and it'd just be generally like just a diff. It's it's so it's just weird how you can't. It's just weird how everything is. It seems to be valued differently. Not valued differently, but the, but taken differently because they. I don't context think, matters, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't feel like. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, I hope it all fucks off. Obviously, so we can get back to normal. I think everyone does. And uh, there's going to be some ramifications because, you know, the thing about a fucked economy is that it ain't just. You know, ain't just rich people being a little bit less rich on it trickles down everywhere because it's it's rich people employing less people and you know bad economic circumstances lead to death, mate. Not directly, but in that like there's not many people it just creates bad times, don't it? Exactly. There's not many people in America literally starving to death. You know. But if it was the worst economic downturn of the century you know, people would be dying indirectly, you know, whether that's through like people that can't, less people can afford health insurance or, you know, people are generally more stressed and stress contributes to, you know, obviously it's a risk factor for everything. Crime increases. Um, Money is one of the biggest stress factors and contributing factors towards suicide um, and, the, there's just a million and one ramifications of it so we're gonna have to work hard to do what we can do to help out economically and if i can employ someone i'll fucking employ someone mate or, well I'll employ as many people as i possibly can so anyone who wants a job get at me mate i'll give you one maybe depending on what i can think of for you to do <laughs> i'm sure there'll be shit on there's always there's always shit to do on and yeah, it's going to be a big national effort. Not just that, but also I think like it's time to put um, like if 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 the government can put this much money in now. And now I understand that they're not putting all this money into the NHS because they've actually got this money. They're going to be in. A, there's going to be a massive deficit. They're going to owe this money. They're all, they're borrowing a lot of it. Like and um, they're they're going to owe it out. So. It's not like they always had this money to spend. However, like we should be prioritizing the NHS more. Obviously, I think everyone agrees with that. Now, you could say that Boris was already planning to do that with the, you know, what he what they announced in their manifesto. Obviously, some people say that doesn't go far enough and it doesn't make up for the, you know, years of austerity and shit, but I think on Aside from that, you know, we shouldn't be working with an NHS that is bare minimum. That we shouldn't be working something with something that's passable. You know, why don't we have more nurses? On why don't we have more than we need? You know, why why is only what you need? And and same goes for police officers. As soon as you have more than you need, though, you get people chopping it because of like cost cutting and shit. I think we just need to prioritize all the core things like that a bit more, like NHS police and emergency services and just everything even down to like i think i think teachers are way underpaid personally yeah crazy for, for the job mate. that they do like i think there's a lot i think society would benefit a lot if uh, there was more incentives to do these careers like and it attracted you know police as well also i i think our i think our tax system i think there should be a kind of voluntary aspect to our to our tax system where i'm not saying like every individual should be allowed to choose where their tax money gets spent because obviously you just end up with some crazy shit going on there you just like everyone would just you know go for the same things and stuff and it just wouldn't be but i think that you should be able there should be like some element of choice in it or like you know or even like a kind of um voluntary like a kind of voluntary donation type thing. So it's like a type of uh, tax slash charity thing where you can just say like, listen, I just want to, I just want this money to contribute to the NHS or the police or yeah, maybe something a, like maybe that. Maybe a percentage of it could do that. Like I wish you could, yeah, I wish you could have some kind of... Like someone rings you up and goes, right, you've got 20% of your... Right, we're all voting. 
in the election and shit. And half of us are saying, oh, yeah, you know, Conservatives are going to get it done, whatever. Yeah, get Brexit done, whatever, all this shit. And half of us are saying, um, you know, save the NHS and voting for Labour and whatever. About three people are voting for the Green Party. And... We, but we're the people. We're we're saying right. We're saying, oh, you know, this this uh, this party are gonna fund the NHS better than this party. This part, you know, whatever, right? But we are the people. So what if we just like theoretically? What if we start a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or some shit? Good goal. Or a GoFundMe or some shit, right? Just to fund the NHS. We said right. We're gonna build a new hospital, right? Out of everyone in Britain. There's nobody. There's no. There's there's very few people saying, "Ah, oh, nah." I think the NHS has got enough money. Don't. I don't think we should. It's just whether you believe that each party is going to fund it. You know, there's nobody saying, "Ah, oh, it's got enough money." I don't think we should. Don't think we should put any more money into it. So, like, let's say we start. We just said, right, we're going to crowdfund a uh, hospital. Let's say we did that. We could get. I'm pretty sure you could get ev- with the right, you know, strategy with the right media strategy. Pretty sure you could get everyone in the uk pretty much who can everyone who can afford to 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 donate some money to that and it's just like a like a voluntary form of tax right and uh i just think that if we had some option or some vehicle for doing that or if it was easier obviously we, i'm sure there is a way we could do that but if there was some kind of uh way to kind of make that process more of an option then i just think that'd be sick like like i like because one of the big problems with one of the reasons why people don't like paying taxes is because they don't like where it's going or they don't trust that they it's going to go. don't know where it's going. Well, they don't, yeah, they don't trust it's going to go to the right things because, like, you hear all these stories about, oh, uh, you know, the police are going around people's houses because of a tweet and shit like that. And I'm like, <laughs> how, how are we talking about police? We're talking about police shortages, yet there's people going around saying, oh, I want to check your thinking about this tweet. And yeah, that. literally want to check your thinking. Like, fuck off, man. Like, like that, like that's so that's where nobody wants the tax dollars to go through. Yeah, or the they, or they say to you in interviews, they're trying not to recruit any more white males. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, do you want to share that fun story or what? Yeah, <laughs> I went for an interview for a support role in the police, and it was uh, it was like training them at this training center. Funny enough, <laughs> it was like self defense and fitness and things like that and I was like hang on a minute I've kind of done some of this job in the army reserve so I'll give it a go like and I went to the interview and they were like I smashed the interview and they were like basically we think you're mad keen and we reckon you're going to be bored in this job because you're going to be instructing the same lesson over and over and there's no progression da, da, da. but we think you'd make an excellent like firearms officer or something so you'd just join the police as an officer and then specialize into firearms and the woman in the interview was like kind of liked me i think like professionally yeah <laughs> and and said like you know look i'll help with your application and stuff like that absolutely you know if, here's my email address just go through the now like just so that you know we are trying really to not to recruit so many white males at the moment but if you apply we can't knock you back based on that i think what she meant to say was we're trying to recruit primarily from non-white you yeah know, yeah to get, we're to trying get to make the representation the different and stuff like that yeah. and i was just like oh i was like am i actually here she, this? to be fair like yeah she probably just worded it wrong but yeah she definitely worded it wrong but, but you can't but even that as a premise is just yeah fucking but wrong you, like because you can't say we're trying what does she say we're trying not to we're trying not to recruit, recruit any more white any males. more white males but but they can't knock you back on that basis yeah so they're saying like they're trying not to recruit they're trying not to recruit white males but they can't knock you back on that basis but that that that's lit- literally a, a, a contradictory statement because you, you can't ha- how are you trying not to recruit them then yeah like how how are you trying not to recruit them if there's no bias saying that you're trying not to recruit white males m- m- makes it a bias you should have just said you're not a male that's what you should have said yeah you know <laughs> yeah well i'm always skeptical of these things that you fill in where it's like you know uh this is just for our yeah it's just for surveys he's, he's you know. giving you your gender and things for a survey or whatever just so they can get applicant numbers and shit i know yeah um yeah anyway we're, we're digressing but but i think there's a there's a conversation about how 
there's just going to be a conversation about where our priorities lie because obviously the NHS was was taken off guard. I think everyone already knew the NHS was a priority, yeah. obviously. But you have to look beyond that, don't you? You have to try and preempt shit. Obviously, now it's the NHS, but you, you don't know what it what it might be like. Um, and I think you have to. You can't just live react. We're just living reactively, aren't we? And we can't be reactive with stuff like preparing for epidemics, preparing for a huge fucking asteroid, preparing for nuclear war, preparing for you know whatever. What what else could end civilization? Man, there's a million things, isn't there? But um, you can't. There's not the kind of thing you can afford to be reactive about you have to take the pre- precautions and, and be prepared for it and if that means like you know e- even looking at like uh the the wildfires in australia oh that was crazy wasn't it? it was it was wild mate and they were they were a bit caught they obviously weren't ready for that were they like even though they have fires every year but they were just way worse but you have to assume you have to be over prepared don't you yeah at all times like and um, so it's going to start a conversation about where our priorities lie in terms of uh, funding and stuff. And obviously that's going to be a hard conversation because the country's going to be massively in debt and no one's going to be making no money because it's going to be... I mean, I personally don't think that it'll be a... I, I think that it's just going to be a short, sharp recession. And I, I don't think it's going to be a, a proper, long, slow, drawn out shit because I, I think now, like because the economy was so strong beforehand there's like gonna be all this pent-up demand like like as soon as it gets going mate i'm booking holiday i bet everyone else is you know what i mean not everyone else because a lot of people don't have the money to but everything's gonna gradually start start going again because the demand is there like it's not like there's no uh not gonna be any demand anymore so it's just gonna be a case of things getting back up and running you know getting the restaurants and the little independent shops and all that back up and running people back into jobs and then everything will start flowing again and um then i'll make a channel about personal finance but it's not it's probably not worth it right now but we'll talk about saving money and stuff and it'll be fun all right anyway you got anything else to add lad uh everyone stay really. safe man. that's what i'm saying everyone stay safe key key point is like overestimate i mean like overestimate how bad this shit is not in a way that you gotta shit yourself right because there's a fine balance in there between panic mode and being prepared man the whole point about absolutely everything is in life not absolutely everything in life but a big part of it is be prepared and then don't worry because if you are as prepared as possible all you've got to do is put your focus on doing what you got you got to put your focus on being prepared put your focus on washing your hands being isolated um, keeping you, you making sure you're encouraging your f- family and close ones and shit to be isolated. Um, taking all the steps on. That's all you have to focus on. And then once you're doing everything you can go, that's when it's okay to let go of all the anxiety. That's when it's okay to stop worrying because that's when it becomes out of your control once you've mastered everything that is in your control. And so myself and Mike over here are being super isolated little fucks mate and i hope you all you all are too i've been trying to smash out a bit of uh content to try and keep people entertained i hope this podcast wasn't too much mumbling i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you did obviously it's a super chill one and uh i'll smash some more chilled ones out i think we'll do another podcast and uh, i'll include some kind of general life updates and i won't talk about coronavirus in it because i've got the coronavirus off my chest mate so no pun intended no pun intended anyway do you want to see you later mike yeah see you in a bit stay safe everyone and uh make sure your loved ones are staying safe as well and just be nice to everyone and like yeah be nice to me in the comments all right see you later